to the front lines in eastern Ukraine. The simmering conflict with Russian-backed rebels, once again the focus of US concern. As tensions with Russia ratchet higher, CNN has gained this unprecedented access to the Ukrainian president on a carefully planned troop visit, flying with him fast and low to avoid ground fire. It's been a long time now. It's been seven years, this war. Yes, during seven years. Yes. And how are the soldiers? Are they holding up or are they tired of this war? They are tired, of course. Like many men, you know, during seven years, it, it, it's longer than, than the Second World War. Yes, you see that. And it's terrible. Longer than the Second. But with its complex network of dank, muddy trenches, this so-called line of contact, in some places just a few dozen yards from the enemy, looks more like the First World War. I mean, we've entered this warren of, of trenches that have been dug along the front line. I can tell you, I mean, it's, it's like being thrown back to the early 20th century and, and the Great War. I've not seen anything like this in modern warfare. But this is modern. The reality of confrontation with Moscow and its proxies. Is there a chance that the Russians could be planning an invasion? Of course. Of course. We know it. Uh, beginning from 2014, we know that it can be, it can be anyway, each day. It yeah. can be. So they are ready and... But, but we are also ready because we are on our, on our land, on our territory. This is why Ukraine, the US and the Western allies are so alarmed. Amid growing tensions, a dramatic build-up of Russian forces near the Ukrainian border and in Crimea. Cell phone footage has emerged of armoured columns like this one and of military hardware being transported by rail towards the border. Ukrainian military officials tell CNN they estimate more than 50,000 Russian troops are now massing. Moscow says it's just an exercise, not a threat. But back at the line of contact, there's already been a deadly upsurge in sniper fire. More than 20 soldiers killed, say Ukrainian officials, so far this year. And out here, even the president runs the gauntlet. We've got to run for it, right? Yes, run. OK. Run. All right, come on, let's go. So we're very close now, aren't we, to the separatists? That is open area. That was amazing. So we've come so close now to the front line between Ukrainian forces and the Russian-backed separatists that President Zelensky and I just had to run through the open ground to get to this cover because the situation is so volatile, so potentially dangerous here. We got head, head, one your head, two head. Elected mm -hmm. two years ago on a promise of ending this conflict, something he's failed to achieve. President Zelensky says he risks these hotspots, as he calls them, to show his frontline soldiers they have political support. But what Ukraine really needs, he says, is more assistance from Washington, more weapons, more money, and crucially, more backing to join NATO, the Western military alliance. Supportive words from President Biden, he says, are simply no longer enough. Ukraine need more than words. That is the second. The third one... Can I, I, can I just ask a follow-up yes, on yes, that? Yes. You, you understand, don't you, that if Ukraine were to be given NATO membership, yeah. that might make the conflict in this country even worse. It would I, infuriate Moscow. I can, I, 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 I can tell you. I can answer you. Maybe you are right, but what now is going on? What we do here? What our people do here. They fight. So what can be in the future, I don't know, but we, 